Hey everybody, Denise with Lazy K Homestead. Well, I hope you're having a good day. It is just about the end of January, and I am thinking spring. We are in for an ice storm tomorrow here in Tennessee, um, but I'm still thinking spring. I was outside today, it's 49, and I was looking at my gardens, thinking about what I want to plant, where I want to plant it. So I thought I'd do a little video on companion planning and garden design so and what tools that i use and that are available just some of them because the internet is full of uh, these things so what i wanted to do was start with um, garden design which i think is the best place to start where we want to plant our garden and how big a space we have and think about how many plants you want in there and what you can realistically put in there and what you're hoping to accomplish. If you're wanting to have a kitchen garden, which is kind of an old fashioned term for just a garden that you just eat from or have a kitchen garden and a canning garden, that's what we do. But, but if you have a, a space where you can have a big enough area to maybe have both in one, that's great too. So think about what you want to plant and it's good to write down these things. That way you've got everything kind of organized. I'm not the greatest person to organize for sure, but I try every year. So what I wanted to show you was um, something, well, you can do this on paper. Let me just back up. You can just take a piece of paper. Um, you can use like paper with grid on it or just a piece of notebook paper and just kind of plan out your garden and put say for instance if you want early spring you want to plant cabbage and broccoli uh, cauliflower collard greens and you know you want to plant them and for instance how many you want to plant and just put that on your grid and you can either write it out or just like draw a little thing or use crayons or Markers, however you want to do it. But what I wanted to show you was something that I uh, go to because it's fun and, and it's a free trial. Um, and that's what I have. And it is the Farmer's Almanac. Let me see if I can get to it here. Garden Planner. Now I'm just going to hold this up. See if you can see this. It's uh, Farmer's Almanac. You just go to Farmer's Almanac. And you do have to create an, an account. I didn't have to put a credit card in, but uh, it is a free trial. And I believe it's seven days. And right there is a video on how to use their service if you want them to help you. And they do have a free chat and they will come on and ask you if you need any assistance. So what you can do is, uh, let's see here, down here, let's see if I can get that there, you can see, I know this is on my tablet, but it'll say uh, open plan. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Whoops, hold on, let me get back to that. Open plan. And it'll say, I'm using a touch mode, so it asks you all these questions. Okay, so this is what it looks like. And there is your grid. There are plants down the side, and you just go up and down with that, you know, scroll up and down accordingly. So um, let's see if you, I can show you how I'm doing this. Hope this is not too complicated. So anyway, there's your grid. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to cabbage. All right, let me get to the C's. It's all in alphabetical order, which is great. And it gives you cabbage, fall, spring, red, whatever you want. So I'm going to just use the spring. And I'm going to come over here and just put it right there. Okay? And now you just drag it down, however many that you think you want in there, for instance. Okay? Then you just click. And there's your cabbage. Okay, so this brings us to companion planting. So companion planting, if you're not familiar with, is a very old, um, old 
way of planting a garden. And farmers have known this for years and years and years. Um, but if you haven't heard of it, it's kind of a neat um, thing to think about because companion means friends. And so like if I wanted to plant cabbage, then I could plant broccoli next to it. And then if I could plant cauliflower and I could plant collard greens. And so they are all friends. They all have the same pests and they all basically take the same nutrition out of the ground. Now, if you wanted to plant something um, next to it, and let me get to that companion planting chart that you can get right online, which I did. So for instance, here is a free companion planting guide. I just got it right off the internet and there's many different ones that you can choose from. I liked this one because it has um, plant buddies and plant bullies, and that's really um, what you want. So for instance, I'm gonna go over here to cabbage. Okay, for cabbage, the buddies are beans, cucumbers, eggplant, lavender, strawberries, and sunflowers. You can plant all that next to your cabbage. Okay, now you don't want to plant onions, garlic, or fennel next to that because they are not good for each other. Now, they either are not good buddies because they take the nutrients away from each other out of the ground, or they attract the pests that will harm each other. And you have to really be mindful of that when you're planting your garden. Another good reason. Um, about companion planting is you will learn the herbs that go good together and a lot of the herbs and flowers, for instance, you can plant marigolds next to your cabbages because they will help repel uh, some of those moths that in the, the late summer uh, or late spring, I should say, not late summer, but late spring like to come in lay eggs on the cabbages and the broccoli and those are kind of nasty because they make those webs and then it's so hard to get rid of that when you're harvesting so what i suggest and what i've done is i've really studied these companion planting guides and there are also some really good books um, that you can get on your kindle uh, if you don't have access to you know a bookstore they're kind of hard to find in my area anymore. So I have uh, my tablet and I have the Kindle and I have downloaded some free with Amazon, with, yeah, with the Amazon um, books to read. And I really love uh, that. Even though you may be a, a gardener that's um, gardened for years and years like me and Willis, or you might be the first time gardener, it's really good to um, increase your knowledge because you know, even though you may know something, it's never, it's never a shame to, um, to increase your knowledge and learn. At least that's what I think. <laughs> so anyway, um, I just thought you guys might like to know about companion planning, um, and garden design. And it's really fun to get on the, uh, Farmer's Almanac site and you can play with it and you can uh, start different plans all in that free trial. And if you want to, um, pay for it and have it, you know, forever, that's fine too, because you can't go wrong with the Farmer's Almanac, I don't think. Um, another thing I wanted to, um, uh, talk about today was the Master Gardener Program. Now, I went through the Master Gardener Program in, uh, Louisa County, Virginia, and that's where I'm from. And we had a really uh, great program. A lot of people are um, saying things negative about Master Gardener. And I wanted to kind of clarify that a little bit with my experience because I am a Master Gardener. I went through the class. And yeah, it can kind of be geared towards the older population. And the only reason that being is the time that the classes are given. And that's usually during the day. Um, I was 49 when I took the class and I didn't think I was old. <laughs> I'll be 64 next month. I still don't think I'm old, but anyway, um, 
we learned so much in our Master Gardener program really focused on our community. It, Louisa is a small rural uh, county and we are close to Richmond and we were close to Charlottesville. I don't live there anymore. As y'all know, I live in Tennessee and um, we created community vegetable gardens for people that live there. And there were some older people that um, had never grown a garden before. They'd grown flowers, but they'd never grown vegetables. And then there were some young people out in the community that had never grown uh, vegetable gardens either. So we were able to teach them how to grow and use the companion planting guides. And we also used the um, garden design and they had their own resources uh, other than what I'm showing you guys. But like I said, you can go online and just find all kinds of freebies. And, and that's up to you. But I just recommend, you know, increasing your knowledge as much as you can about your gardening and where you want it and what you want to grow. And if you want to can, you know, make sure you've got enough tomatoes planted. If you've got um, squash and you want to freeze that or cucumbers and make pickles, you know, kind of bear in mind how many you might need. Um, we generally plant at least seven squash plants, 10 cucumbers. Um, well, we plant a lot of tomatoes because we do can a lot of tomatoes. We uh, plant anywhere from uh, 75 to 80 plants. Plus we eat a lot and we love the heirloom. Um, something else I wanted to say about Master Gardener um, a lot of people have said um, that they aren't really into the organic gardening. Well, now I know every Master Gardener program is probably different in the communities that they're in. Ours was really focused on organic gardening. Um, it was a time when people were really um, made, being made aware of Roundup and the possibilities that it was cancer causing. Now, I'm not I'm not saying that you can't use Roundup. You guys use whatever you want to do. But I'm just focusing on Master Gardener right now. Um, in Louisa, we had and still have a community there called Twin Oaks. And it's been there for over 50 years. And it's been a, um, we used to call it a commune. I think they just call it a community now. But it was there when I was growing up. And they always um, had organic gardening and they were really big in that and they focused big in trying to teach the community um maybe back then maybe i'm talking the 70s people weren't as aware or maybe didn't want to be aware the older generation but the younger generation like me i thought it was just cool and that's one of the things that i tried to um, help my dad because he was of the generation of using all the chemicals willis and i try really hard not to use any chemicals in the ground except for what we have here on our homestead and fertilizers um, there are some times that we may have to use 10 10 10 um, he does that with the corn because we grow so much of it but for the most part we use our rabbit manure our um, chicken and our turkey manure for everything that we grow in our gardens and we compost the turkey and the chicken and rabbit and if you have goats, um, can be used straight away. We also use uh, what is called mushroom uh, fertilizer here uh, over in, um, I think it's, I may be saying this wrong, Lenore City, Tennessee, they have a uh, mushroom plant and they grow mushrooms. And that is a mixture of different manures. And you can buy that because I believe they only use it once and then they sell it and you're able to buy that. So if you guys are look for something like that, that's a really good manure too. Sometimes it's hot because it does have horse manure in it, but so you'll have to make sure that you compost it down or mix it with topsoil. Uh, we've had that problem too. So we usually try to buy it early spring and have it mixed with a topsoil that we can also buy from the man who sells it. And then we put it on the garden and just let the, the rain kind of compost it down and cool it off if that's a, a term you guys um don't mind me using 
it's not hot where you put your plants in it and they die. It's It's been composted down from the elements of the rain and snow and things like that. Um, also, I wanted to just share a little bit about the um, Twin Oaks community. They um, also have a great um, heirloom seed savoring um, exchange and it is called let me show you this now I don't get paid for this this is just something I want to share because I'm really proud of it being from Louisa it's called Southern Exposure Seed Exchange and they really focus on a lot of the old heirloom corn and, and other of course I, I get the corn from there we use um, the dent corn which is a white field corn that we grow and then we uh, dry and then we grind it for our own cornmeal and if you guys haven't seen my video on that I wish you would try to look for it because you'll notice such a huge difference in the cornmeal that you grow yourself and grind it yourself compared to what you buy in the store um, but anyway this is just really neat. I want to show you the graphics too and this is all hand done and that's what we've got there hickory cane corn which is one of the white field corns and their website is www.southernexposure.com. And you can go on there and order a free catalog. And I just wanted to um, share that they also are partners with um, the Master Gardener program that I went through. And so was uh, Monticello Thomas Jefferson's place. And uh, they grow everything organic up there too. So I just wanted to um, just maybe uh shed some positivity on the master gardener program and hopefully because you know we all can learn and one thing about master gardener too it's great for identifying things that you are not um aware of like if you have a tree that's growing you've moved to your property and you have a tree and you don't know what it is well you can go and bring the leaf or a piece of bark to your master gardener which is usually with your ex extension office in the county and they will identify it. We had tools to uh, identify everything that was in that vicinity. And if we couldn't, we were also partnered with Virginia Tech. And I believe here in Putnam County, Tennessee, the Master Gardener program is uh, partnered with uh, Tennessee Tech. And they're really uh, a great um, source. And we would send it off to them and they would come back in a couple of days with the identification. That also um, was for bugs, any kind of pests. Um, we had a lady come in with what was called an assassin bug, which is not really good. Um, we found that we were having that um, infestation and they would tell us how to get rid of that um, if we didn't know. Also, um, weeds any kind of thing you needed to uh, identify and we also did and that was all a free resource now they had uh, soil testing which i believe cost some money for you to get your soil tested there may be some free programs out there now i'm not sure i haven't done this in a few years but uh, i just wanted to shed some positivity on the master gardener program um you if you are interested in your master gardener program, you call your local extension office and you just talk to them and see what they are focusing on in that community. It may not all be community vegetable gardens. It may all be flower gardens or planting trees or things like that, but just find out if you are interested in that. But I will tell you one thing, you will learn a lot um, from your master gardener uh, program. You'll learn a lot about um, everything that's in your area from um, the insects, the trees, the plants. Um, and it's very interesting. And we always had a lot of great speakers. So with that said, I think I'll end my video, but I hope you guys will find this really informative. And again, if you have any questions or comments, I hope that you will uh, let me know. And I hope you're enjoying my videos and um, talk to you real soon. Bye.